Did you know sales is a dirty word? Yes, the minute I say sales skills, half the room twists their face like they just sucked a lemon and they want to run for the exits. Do you know why people hate sales so much? Because they don't know the difference between 21st century sales skills and being a salesperson. Live from the Leaf Academy Studios, this is the Tuesday Switch Words Podcast. I'm your host, the School Doc. If you're new to this podcast, there are three segments. First, the 21st Century Skill of the Week. Second, Behind the Scenes of the Young Entrepreneur Program. And third, I share something personal. If you are subscribed to the free newsletter, you will get access to the entire podcast without interruptions or ads. Otherwise, I post some of the clips on IG, LinkedIn, and YouTube. If you want to become a free subscriber, follow the link. Now it's time for segment number one, the 21st century skill of the week. And it looks like the 21st century leadership skill is on the board. There's an academic concept that none of you learned in school, which relates to leadership skills in the 21st century. And that concept is called the six fundamentals of leadership. I'm not going to discuss all six fundamentals right now, but I do want to highlight one of them, reflection. If you want to be the best leader in the 21st century and you want other people to follow you, then you need to become a master at reflection. Think about what you've done well, what mistakes you've made, and what learning lessons you can come away with. I thought it would be helpful if I showed you one of my reflection sessions so you had an example to follow. Why the culture of education is this is the way we've always done it. I don't know if you realize this or not, but 99% of teachers and principals do not like new ideas. They do not want to try something new. That means our schools use the same concepts that were used in the 1950s. And when you take a step back and reflect and look at schools from a distance, that's when you realize that the only thing that has changed about our school system is that everything is now digital. The textbooks are digital, the tests are digital, the interactions are digital. But the underlying content, the underlying classes, and the underlying academic concepts are 100% the same as they were in the 1950s. Now, you may not think that's a problem. After all, if kids in the 1950s needed to learn algebra, why wouldn't kids in the 21st century need to learn the same math? Everything in our lives is moving at warp speed, and when everything starts moving really quickly, it also forces our brains to go into overdrive. So here's why reflection is a fundamental of leadership. Being in charge means that you are responsible for everyone in the group. When you take on responsibility, that means you need to slow your brain down. Leaders cannot be thinking a mile a minute. They need to slow things down and figure out where people need to go. And when a leader directs people or delegates, they need to be calm. They need to be cool and they need to be collected. So how do you get there? How do you become calm when the world is chaos? That's why you need to learn how to reflect in life. You need to learn how to slow everything down so you can think for a second. Close your eyes and then count with me right now. We're going to count backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. Now open your eyes and then take a deep breath. Okay, so so let's pause for one second again. Remember, this is all about reflecting skills and leaders need to learn how to reflect. You need to learn how to take a step back. You need to learn how to slow your brain down and analyze reality. Stop being triggered. Stop losing emotional control. Take back over your mind and your body and stop being manipulated by other people. If you want to be a leader, you are saying, I want the responsibility. And if you want responsibility, then you don't have the luxury of acting a fool or getting upset or becoming outraged. Now for segment number two, the Young Entrepreneur Program. 
When people ask me what I do for a living, I tell them I'm an entrepreneur and that I'm building the world's first online 21st century school. If someone said that to you, though, would you know what that meant? There are two types of jobs, the W-2 job and then the entrepreneurial job. I think everyone knows how different each of those jobs are. On the one hand, the W-2 job means you have a boss, you have set hours, you have a job description, and you have job evaluations. On the other hand, the entrepreneur job means you are your own boss. You have no set hours, there's no job description, and you evaluate yourself. And here's why the Young Entrepreneur Program is so important. When you enroll in the Young Entrepreneur Program, there will be three components. First is the entrepreneur school, second is the entrepreneur workshop, and third is the entrepreneur community. Inside the entrepreneur school, you will learn four key concepts. One, how to develop a product or service. Two, how to build a store. Three, how to write a sales pitch. And four, how to close sales. When you learn all four concepts inside the entrepreneur school, you will learn how to take your time and build out all four components. The point of school is to give you options in life. The purpose of school is to give you more opportunities. That's exactly what the Entrepreneur School will do. It will give you more options and more opportunities. When you finish Entrepreneur School, you will be able to develop a product or service. You'll be able to build a store. You'll be able to write a sales pitch and you will be able to make sales. When you know how to be an entrepreneur, you have more options and you have more opportunities. Don't forget a W-2 job has set hours and a limited job description. When you have a W-2 job, you get to go home at the end of the day and forget about your work. When you're an entrepreneur, it's a 24-7 job. It's your whole life. And that's because you're betting on yourself. And therefore, the less you work, the less you get out of your entrepreneurial venture. To learn more, I hope you'll put your email on the waiting list. I will email you as soon as things are getting closer to launch. Follow the link in the newsletter and put your email on the waiting list. Now for segment number three, it's time for something personal. In 2013, I decided to try my hand at being an entrepreneur. That's when I launched the Education Development Institute, an education think tank, and I ran that think tank as a side hustle while I was working inside the K-12 system. And I'm sure that there are many people out there who are thinking the same thing. Do I want another W-2 job or can I make enough money being an entrepreneur and do my own thing? The point of entrepreneur school isn't to get you to quit your job. The point is to give you the option. The point is to give you a new opportunity in life. But what if you knew how to run that side hustle better? What if you could make the same amount of money with less effort? Or what if you could make more money with the same effort? That's why the Young Entrepreneur Program is so vital for people. And that's why I'm working really hard to get it off the ground. It's a shame our K-12 system doesn't want to teach these academic concepts. But the truth is, they don't know how to teach them. So when you wonder why it's nearly impossible to fix our schools, it's because the teachers and principals in the system don't know how to teach anything new or innovative. For example, I wrote a 21st century course for them. It's called the 28 Days of Black History. And this is the most comprehensive class on black history in education today. This is a 28 straight day course that teaches you the ins and outs of real black history. This is a 21st century class because it's 100% cross-curricular through both the English and social studies department. But the problem is that 90% of teachers don't know how to teach cross-curricular courses. And that's because they are so used to teaching outdated classes that when presented with a modern and cutting edge class, they get scared. I'm at the beginning phases of revolutionizing education. What you see right now is only the tip of the iceberg. Over time, you will begin to see more and more of what a modern 21st education looks like. I honestly thought I could just say the school system is old and we need to fix it and people would listen. I now know that was very naive. Most people hear what they want to hear and then tune everything else out. And you probably do that as well. So if you want to stop ignoring facts, you need to slow your brain down and start listening more intentionally to people. 
I want to personally thank everyone that is a subscriber to the newsletter. I also want to thank everyone that's new to the community. Welcome aboard. And I promise this is one community that you will never regret joining. If I want to fix the K-12 system, then I need to present to you the highest quality education programs in the world. And that takes time. That takes energy and it takes commitment on my part. All you need to do is sit back and watch what I come up with. And I hope you enjoy the show. If you have a question or a comment or you want to somehow get my attention, please follow me on X or Instagram and tag me on your posts. I've been on social media for just over three years and I have figured out how to use social media to promote new ideas and grow an audience. So don't be afraid to tag me, like me, repost me, or make a comment. Thank you for listening to the Tuesdays with Schwartz podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with your friends. Until next time, this is the school I'm saying. I'll see you.